Welcome. In this video, we'll be using a different type of image called an RW2 file. And your computer probably doesn't know how to open it. But just know that if you take an RW2 file, you can just drag it right into Photoshop. And it will open it up in a program called Camera Raw. And here's a picture of Gabriel hanging out with the uh, grass all around him. And it's definitely not an easy thing to select him out of this picture because it's a very complex background that is very similar to colors than as him. So we want to go ahead and just click open image. There are other features of Adobe Camera Raw that we're not going to go into right now, but we're just going to choose open image and it opens it up in Photoshop. I'm going to reset my panels here to make sure they're open. So uh, what we want to do is continue our automatic selections by checking out how to select somebody like this. Okay. We're going to use the fourth tool down and the quick selection tool is in there with the magic wand. And the way this tool works is it's got a um, always make a new selection, a pot plus and a minus. It does work the same way with shift and uh, alt to do the plus and minus, but it also works um, a little different. So the way this thing goes is you start pressing on what you want. Okay, so let's say I start in his head here, and I start pressing, and I'm just kind of moving a little bit down as I'm holding the mouse or the pen against the tablet, and then all of a sudden it jumps. You see it jump? What uh, Photoshop is doing is it's determining what to select based on what you have, and it's you know using the blurring, uh, the focus of it, the uh, contrast, different colors, all that to determine where it thinks the edge might be you want to keep it in this plus mode all the time and just uh, switch to the subtraction mode on the fly using the alt button so I can add that part of his forehead and if I did too far like got part of the uh, walkway here I would just hold down alt and I'd kind of wipe it away and all this is doing is training Photoshop to select what we're looking at I'm going to just continue to go down here. I don't have to hold down shift. I can just continue to move down to his stripes. I want to get his little arm over here. Okay. And I'm just kind of moving around his pompy and uh, all the way up here. And there's a chance I might have missed something. You know, sometimes it's tough when, you know, the marching ants are so tiny. And notice it processes every now and then. It's going to do that because it's thinking all the time. All right. So now that I have a rough selection, we're going to do the same thing we always do, which is to move back into the Refine Edge dialog box. Remember, you can go to uh, any of the selection tools to get to the Refine Edge dialog box. And as I pull this up, maybe I'll take a look at what it looks like on black. Yeah, there's definitely some issues. We've got some grass on his pompy, a little bit of bumps on his hair. Uh, on white, yeah, about the same. So I'm going to leave it on overlay. And I'm going to have the smart radius turned on. Maybe put it up to about one. See how that looks. Might process for a minute. I don't think I need to shift the edge or smooth or feather or try to mess with the contrast on it right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is zoom in. And I can use this zoom in tool or the little button on my uh, tablet, my little uh, strip. I'm going to zoom in on it close. And what I want to do is just do some work up here. So I'm going to use my refine edge dialog box and click on that little brush and I think 100 is probably too big. I'm going to take it down. Maybe 60. Very good. 60 something looks good. I'm just going to try and buff around here to see if I can fix that. Okay, much better. Over here I don't want that. See how that does. Okay, I'm just going to use my space bar to move around. It looks like I got some extra grass on his arm here. No problem. We'll get rid of that. See how that looks. And then get the grass over here. Now, we yeah, definitely want the grass to turn red so it disappears. And we'll move over here. And I'm not sure. This might be part of him right over here. So uh, I'm going to see what it does when I do that. No, I didn't take it in. Not a problem. We'll fix that in another part of the video. All right. So you, you might go to where part of his hair disappears, and that's okay. I'm going to use um, just a normal new layer with layer mask because... I'm not too concerned about the colors um, contaminating his hair because his hair is about the same color as the stuff behind. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to create a new layer with a layer mask. Notice that we do have some problems. I'm going to Alt click the mask. So I go over to Mask Thumbnail here and I Alt click. And I can see 
what I'm looking at and definitely I have some problems here if you look I don't want all these little lines it's part of the stairway or something behind them so I'm gonna paint that black and just kinda go down and see if I can get rid of some of that All right. Uh, up here yeah, it's kinda getting messy over here I need to get some of that down a little, little more black a little more black over here it's gonna get weird near his eyelashes so I'm just kinda not do too much around his eyelashes up here this is probably going through his face let's take a look at it we just can alt click it again alt click the thumbnail to bring back the original and yeah he's going transparent there notice that you can work on the mask see you can work on the picture or you can work on the mask you see how there's a frame that comes around it and I want to go ahead and make this come back so I'm going to paint it white and I'll just switch to white and paint some white up here to get those hairs back one of the things you could also do in a situation like this, um, I'm going to paint some black around his eye lashes, but one of the things you can also do is uh, when there's little hairs like this that you're just not getting those little hairs, one of the things you can do is paint some really small lines. Okay, So what I'm going to do is take my brush and I'm going to make it really tiny. So like one. Okay, And what I'm going to do is while I'm on the mask and if I if I don't like this you know I can always go back and just you know redo it again but while I'm on the mask I'm gonna paint some white lines to kinda of bring some little hairs just to pop up and they're they're very fine I doubt you can even see much of them right now the way they are they're, they're really fine hairs and um, if we take a look at the mask again you'll see I'm just putting some little hairs kinda of, kinda of just to give it a little bit of a fuzz if you had curly hair you'd want to do curly lines okay it just needs a little bit of this okay just to kind of make it have some some little natural looking short hairs coming out there and we'll alt click and see how that's looking definitely looking kind of transparent over here I'm gonna paint some bigger white so I'm gonna increase my brush size here and paint some white over here bring that out okay and we'll alt click and take a look much better uh, looks like I got a little bit of a something on the edge of his cheek here. I'll shrink that brush back down and I'll paint that out nice and neat. Okay. So we'll zoom out some and see how that's looking. Uh, looks like I have to fix part of his arm here. No problem. We'll check our mask out. Oh yeah, definitely messed up. So we'll paint some black out here. Black out here. And then paint some white through here and we'll see how that looks much better alright so now what we can do with this honestly is we could do something like this um, we could go down to our our background layer and I'm gonna duplicate it so I have my original and what I wanna do is I'm just gonna move him over so I'm gonna click back on my layer that I moved I'm gonna move him over like this and then back in my second layer here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can just select around him and we'll see if we can do a edit fill content aware and see how that looks and I think it looked pretty good we'll see how it looks it's doing um, just uh, this layer so it shouldn't take into account this guy over here so yeah there so there we go we just moved him over on the screen now it is a little easier to do that in CS6 but anyway it might take a little more fixing but I think that's a pretty easy way to remove uh, the little guy and move him around in the image make a better composition and that's it for this video